I do have. Um, good morning, um, colleagues. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's really happy to be in touch with you. And I'm seeing some familiar names in the participant list. I'm seeing Nurse Magdalena. I'm seeing a team from USAID, which are people we work really close with. And to be honest, it feels like a long time since we last met. Um, I'm seeing now that we have a total of 52 participants connected. So this is really, really um, rewarding. Allow me to extend a warm welcome also on behalf of the PAHO WHO representative, Dr. Yutades Pembre, who, um, because of a last minute request from another country, could not be here with us this morning, but he extends his warm wishes and best, um, uh, best for this work, this webinar. Um, I'm sure in, um, in this phase that we are now, I sure hope that um, all the we're connected now with a lot of um, health workers who are on the front line and i hope that you are able to find mechanisms and sources to cope with this new way of working and of living in general as we learn more about the virus and how to deal with this as you know um the health workers well-being is the central pillar of pahos technical assistance to member states and that is our priority um we organized this webinar since we were receiving many questions and concerns about the management of pregnant women during the response to COVID-19. And um, although as far as I am aware, we don't have any pregnant women positive in our countries as far as I'm aware, and please let me know in the chat box if I'm mistaken. However, as we prepare, we wanted to make sure that you had updated information in terms of the management of um, pregnancy um, deliveries. And um, during the invitation, we sent out um, if anyone had any particular concerns or question they wanted us to address in this um, session. And so far, the questions I received was, um, should positive pregnant women be attended at home if they're at home quarantine? Should we set up a delivery room in the isolation rooms? Should we continue to breastfeed in COVID positive 19 mothers? Can the virus be transmitted from a pregnant woman to her child? So well, as we see, we have several questions that the staff, the medical staff and the nurses would like us to address during this workshop. And we're trying our best to ensure we respond to your concerns. As Dr. Seruya said, we are here to support you. So, um, as again, as Dr. Seruya said, this webinar is being facilitated by CLAP, the Latin American Center of Peridatology, Women and Reproductive Health. And for those of you who don't know, CLAP is um, the center of the technical unit that Pan American Organization has based in Uruguay. And they provide us all the expertise and technical advice for Latin America and the Caribbean countries on these topics. So the, seven, the session is divided in three sections. Um, we have the um, reproductive health um, component, we have the maternal health component, and then the perinatal health component. And I thought, um, Rodolfo and Dr. Seruya, that we could probably divide it in, three, in the same way in three sections. We do the first presentation, open for two to three questions, then we do the second presentation, we open again to questions and then the last one and we do a general um, presentations and um, question and answers and then wrap up. If you agree with that, then we could um, go ahead with Dr. Rodolfo Gomez, who is the regional advisor on sexual and reproductive health in CLAP. Uh, do you agree, um, Dr. Gomez and Dr. Saria? Of course, it's Rodolfo, let's take all the time for uh give the and have thank you very much go ahead. The, maybe that one one other idea could be you know to go through the presentation and then have all the questions because we already have the multiple questions that we will be trying to address during the presentation uh it will be a very short uh presentation but uh could be that question as at the end the best option Thank you very much. I am Rodolfo Gomez uh, Ponce de Leon. I am the 
the regional advisor for sexual and reproductive health. And, uh, and I will start the presentation uh, sharing with you that uh, from this uh, COVID pandemic, very new, is a new virus. No one had before uh, antibodies or protections. Uh, is a new virus in an old world that is creating a lot of, you know, confusion and management needs and because it's, it's new. WHO immediately after was declared the pandemic, start a guideline like I'm sharing here in January the 12th uh, with uh, nine chapters trying to define the disease, trying to define the signs, trying to define the treatments or the particular care that people in the intensive care units have to, to have. But for pregnant women, only have three recommendations that you can see here. And uh, in chapter number nine, under the consideration for pregnant patients, uh, the uh, recommendations were really vague and general, you know, like, uh, you know, how to have to consider all the supportive therapies according to the physiological adaptation of a pregnancy, for example. And in the uh, intensive care unit definitions, pregnant women have to have a clear uh, oxygen direct uh, ventilation more than the, the other people, uh, like obese patients, uh, is one small consideration uh, related to the intubation for pregnant women. And the other ones are the research must be approved uh, by uh, the use of uh, pregnant women, particularly for treatments, and the emergency delivery must be, you know, considered but under the general perinatal indication, not uh, for the virus. Only three recommendations in January. In March, you know, uh, two months later uh, this year, WHO had a more comprehensive, you know, clinical management guideline based on the evidence uh, and based on the learning that all the process starts in China. And we had some of the, you know, the chapters. Now we have one chapters of caring pregnant women, another chapter caring the babies and a full description of the information and the evidence at that time. Uh, and we don't have another guideline after that March 13th uh, WHO guideline, as you know, WHO, in order to have a really rigorous process, is, is a, a slow but really uh, valuable process to, to develop guidelines. And I want to mention that uh, in the Americas, why pregnant women are an important uh, population to consider. Because we have a, around 15 million pregnant women per year, 15 million pregnant women. We have to consider, uh, I, I can show here uh, the statistics from the John Hopkins website. But, uh, I, is the information is from yesterday, last night. Uh, Barbados have 73 confirmed cases. And you can see uh, in, the, in the graphic, you know, that that is updated every day. So considering that, you know, spread of the disease around the world, coming from China, uh, then later on in Europe, and now in America, particularly in the US, and going uh, south with different impact, have a, a very uh, nice code for the recommendations, have a green box for the interventions that are with sufficient evidence to support as a strong recommendation. Please do that. The red X is please don't do that because some of the intervention can cause more inconvenience than help. The last yellow one, it is 
can be considered under certain circumstances or for selected patients. Uh, in the chapter of pregnant women and, and newborn, there is no X red, don't do that. But in the other chapters, they have many. I will, I will go, we will be going through all the recommendations with the green checkbox that are in WHO guidelines. The first recommendation uh, from WHO, it is that uh, we have to consider that uh, asymptomatic patients, that we know that around 13% of the pregnant women can be asymptomatic and can have a positive test uh, based on the New York uh, data that we have, you know, from last week. We know that pregnant women could be positive, could be, uh, you know, asymptomatic, and is exactly the same as the population. We have to uh, monitor that. The recommendation is that pregnant women, uh, even those can, uh, that are, are isolated, because they are confirmed cases or because they are suspected cases, they must maintain quarantine conditions. Uh, even in those conditions, they have the right to receive high quality of care before, during, and after the delivery. That includes prenatal care, newborn, postnatal care, violence prevention, medical health care, and reproductive health to contraception. Those services must be maintained. This is how the virus until last night was spread in the U.S. in the red dots. More red means more virus circulating as a cumulative confirmed cases. But on the other hand, we have to consider not only the cumulative new cases, but also the case fatality rate that is moving. The size of the ball, you know, showing how much case fatality rate of the region. For this uh, pandemic, we must consider that all care that women receive during pregnancy must be a positive experience for childbirth. Following WHO guidelines, Every woman must be treated with respect and dignity, must be supported during delivery, receive clear communications, have a viable appropriate pain relief strategies, and particularly receiving evidence-based care like the mobile during labor and the position of choice. All that stuff must be guaranteed for women even under the COVID pandemic conditions. The, all the infection prevention and control strategies uh, must be available for pregnant women or for women who have a miscarriage, fetal, fetal loss, postpartum and post-abortion women. All the precautions must be applied even for interaction between infected caregiver and the child. All the measures, the IPC measures, must be in place. And uh, our colleague Pablo Duran will cover that, how we can take care of the newborn, even if the mother is positive or some caregiver. That will be later on. Uh, if there is a suspicion or confirmation of COVID-19 infection, all health workers, you, all of you, should take appropriate precautions, use personal protective equipment to reduce their own risks to, re to, to be infected and to disseminate the disease through other clients, other clients. Hello, uh, let me introduce myself. I am Bremen de Muccio. I am the regional, uh, the PAHO regional advisor on maternal health. Uh, many years ago, I used to be uh, OBGYN, uh, but now I am working in, in public health, specifically in the field of maternal health. 
Well, I tried to highlight three or four points that I think are important in practical terms. But probably some things that I'm going to say to you in the next minutes are not a new for many of you, because with the available low levels of evidence, we have more questions than answers. For this reason, I believe that the most important will be the time where we can exchange thoughts and comments uh, once our PowerPoint presentation have been finished. One of the first points that probably all of you know is risk in pregnant women. Uh, so far, we know that pregnant women are not at increased risk of getting sick by COVID-19. In general terms, pregnant women do not have more serious illnesses as happened in the flu pandemic in 2009. Probably all of you remember that at that time, uh, flu have a very complicated uh, incidence in the cases of maternal death in, in the regions. Uh, let me pass to the next. Uh, thank you. Well, other uh, point that is under discussion is routine, routine antenatal care. Uh, we continue to believe that antenatal care is extremely important for pregnant women and perinatal health, but we must try to reduce the number of visits to health services to reduce the risk that a pregnant woman will get an infection there, uh, especially in low risk pregnant women. Uh, so, in women who are, who are not suspected for a COVID-19 infection, we should try to reduce the number of face-to-face -face visits and change some of them for telemedicine intervention where possible or telephone contacts in other cases. Uh, or uh, it is recommended that pregnant women communicate by phone electronically with her provider who must guarantee the necessary social distance condition to avoid crowding of women in routine prenatal care. In the event of possible infection or confirmation of COVID-2 infection, routine visits should be postponed until the end of the isolation period. In these cases, uh, if the means are available, Prenatal consultation can be made by phone or via web. Okay, next one, please. Other point that is uh, important to discuss from uh, obstetric perspective is the use of corticosteroids. Uh, in the guidelines, chapter 11, explain the use of corticosteroids specifically for viral pneumonia. And it's very clear that the recommendation uh, is not use corticosteroids to manage viral pneumonia. But, next one, please. But we have another situation, is the specific case of uh, the manage of the threatening uh, preterm uh, deliver. In these cases, uh, we need to uh, use corticosteroids to induce fetal lung maduration. Uh, so, uh, WHO's recommendation includes a specific paragraph in the recommendation uh, about the use of corticosteroids in recommended to promote fetal lung maturation. So, the problem is that the recommendation said, in this situation, the balance of benefits and harm for the women under premature newborn should be discussed with the women to guarantee an informed decision, since this evaluation may vary according to clinical condition of women. So, it's very... Yes. Um, we, we we lost you a while ago. Can you start again? You said the problem is okay. The problem is that we need to do a balance about 
risk of benefits of the use of corticosteroids in the case of uh, COVID-19 positive pregnant women. And nobody has this point very clear. So this is an individual decision that we need to manage with the rest of the team and obviously with the women that are at risk to have a preterm baby. Okay? That's good. I can't hear you. Yeah, um, it cut out again, but um, I guess in the question and answers, we could clarify a bit again the management of the. Of the... Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Uh, finally, uh, the next, please, uh, from PAHO and WHO we are continue promoting the right to a positive experience during childbirth. Uh, so we promote vaginal delivery as the ideal way of childbirth, but no, always that is possible. So in these cases, we need to uh, manage the different uh, reasons to perform a C-section uh, when is recommended. And the reasons to do a C-section are the same that we have in the past, in, in, the, in the last uh, six months or three months. So we are not promoting C-section as the ideal way to uh, finalize a pregnancy in, in this COVID-19 uh, uh, scenario. So uh, I know that many of the services are performed more C-section than expected, but I think that it's another point that we need to address in, in probably at the end of our conversation. Thank you very much for this possibility. Good morning, colleagues, and continuing with the presentation, I'm going to focus on the newborn. Uh, I am Pablo Duran, the Regional Advisor on Prenatal Health. And I'd like to start with, um, with the concerns and questions that Dr. Omer mentioned at the beginning, uh, as are your questions, your concerns, and also the, the, the lines that guided uh, preparing the, the preliminary guidelines that WHO and PAHO develop and share with you. Uh, the, the possibility of vertical transmission from the mother to the newborn, uh, the, the possibilities of horizontal transmission, how to proceed uh, in order to avoid uh, infecting the newborn, uh, about core clamping and early attachment, uh, breastfeeding and the care provided within the facility and at the time of discharge are, have been the main questions that we have tried to answer. And we lost you, Pablo. We lost you for a good minute. Uh, okay. Uh, so I, I was uh, mentioning the, the questions and concerns that you, you have already mentioned and that guided the preparation of the guidelines that WHO and PAHO share with you. Is it clear now? Okay, um, I will continue. Um, it's very clear. Okay, uh, so the, regarding the first uh, topic, right now we can say there's, there's no evidence of vertical transmission from the mother to the newborn previous to the delivery. There have been some few cases reported uh, showing newborns infected. They were tested after birth and two few cases reported with IgG but not IgM, only two cases that are not clear 
So by now we can say that there's no evidence of vertical transmission during pregnancy and during delivery. So this is by now one important topic that we have to take into account. Um, again, we have to stress that these are preliminary evidence based on the cases reported and we need to keep on track on the evidence in order to check if it changed. But right now, there's no evidence, and I want to repeat it, there's no evidence of vertical transmission before the delivery. But still, we need to be prepared, and, and Dr. De Muccio, uh stressed the issue of taking care and implementing all the infection prevention control measures in order to receive the newborn and to avoid the horizontal transmission of the infection from the mother to the newborn. This implied having in place the adequate uh, professionals from the obstetrics side, but also from the neonatologists, pediatrics, laboratory, intensive care units, and all the equipment that may be required to provide the adequate and timely care to the newborn in case of he or she presents respiratory distress of, or other conditions. But this is not strictly linked to this condition, but as in general. The second issue that I'd like to stress, and it's linked to the previous uh, mention about the no evidence of vertical transmission, is the issue related to core clamping uh, as there's no evidence of vertical transmission. And by now, the possibility of transmission is through the respiratory airway. There's no evidence that support not implementing delayed core clapping. So in general terms, and based on the evidence, there's no restriction to implement um, delayed core clapping. So we can sustain promoting uh, delayed core clapping. Regarding early attachment, again, taking care of the IPC, the infection prevention and control measures uh, around the delivery, it's important, but it's also important to look the, take care of the ways that promoting in the way that it's possible the, the, the care from the mother to the newborn. We know that uh, several recommendations, mainly in China, the cases reported implementing strict isolation and separation of the mother and the newborn uh, we need to think in, in the specific case about this situation. The next one, please. Regarding the care provided within the institution, the other question is if starting or not breastfeeding. And again, if the, all the conditions and the prevention for airway and uh, flush transmission are considered promoting the adequate feeding to the newborn that may be breastfeeding, uh, extraction of the maternal milk um, provided to the newborn, again, considering all the IPC measurements, or using, if it's available, um, maternal milk from, uh, from the bank are the, the main recommendations to provide because we know that breast milk is the, the best way of feeding the newborn. So it has to be evaluated case to case, but uh, at first we recommend to try to sustain providing breast milk in the cases that is possible. And if not, to consider how to provide support for the mother at the time of discharge and after the time of at least 14 days with two negative results to restart the breastfeeding. Uh, regarding the, the time of discharge, uh, it's important to stress as the lockdown of the health services 
are in place in, in most of the countries, how to provide support to those newborns that require special care, um, premature uh, or ill newborns that require specific care. And again, to promoting breastfeeding and to implementing vaccinations in those cases that uh, BCG and hepatitis B vaccination was deferred based on a positive mother and or a positive newborn. So uh, consolidated all what I mentioned, there's no evidence of vertical transmission. It's important to provide adequate care in order to avoid the infection of the newborn through horizontal way within the institution. It's important to sustain the best way of feeding the newborn and not necessarily uh, suspend the breastfeeding. And it's important to stress at the time of discharge recommendations for this newborn and the family once they go home. Uh, I stop here and I'm also, again, as my colleagues open for questions. Over. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Bremen. Thank you, Rodolfo. Um, we're open now to questions. Um, I'm looking at the chat and we do have some questions. Let me start with the first one coming from Miss um, Carice Manchester. She's saying, um, what is the minimum PPA apparatus required when delivering or directly managing a COVID positive mother or a suspected COVID mother? What is the minimum COVID-19 PPE apparatus required when delivering a positive mother? Hello, it's Bremen speaking. Thank you for the question. Uh, if you have a suspected case of uh, COVID-19, you need to manage it as positive case. So, you need to prepare everything. You need to to provide to the woman uh, N95 mask, uh, all the per all the the team must uh, work in isolation conditions, establish the minimal number, in some cases two or three inside the room, and another uh, member of the team outside to avoid in and out, in and out. And the equipment is, uh, you need to use uh, the, the, the 195 mask, the uh, protection, I don't know how to say in English, uh, the, the uh, ice protection, uh, you need to use the, uh, uh, Darlene, you can help me, the impermeable uh, uh, tunica, uh, double gloves, and the los zapatones. Googles, the aprons, double aprons, and the boots. Okay, that's uh, the, the the equipment required for a suspected or a positive case of uh, COVID nineteen. This is the minimal. The minimal is the maximum. Here we have not option. We need to manage in the best condition. If you need to reduce. The protection probably member of the team get infection and need to be quarantined in the next days. I want to add to that, uh, Darlene, that many uh, private institutions in Latin America, uh, they had to close their own doors because of the contamination of the medical personnel. 
And uh, if we don't care strictly about that IPC measures, that will create uh, a problem and will not be a solution at all. You have a question related to the home care that I want to mention here. Uh, we know that home births uh, uh, appears like a, a safer option for many women in the in our region. But WHO and, and PAHO will not uh, recommend at all to have a home birth or home care uh, in order to avoid the risk of uh, being infected by COVID-19. Uh, the recommendation is uh, follow the institution of birth as a more evidence-based recommendation. And the risks are minimum if all the protection, the, the IPC measures are taken into account. And, uh, and home births ha have their own risks that uh, maybe will be higher than uh, the delivery baby and institution uh, with all the, those measures, over. Thank you, thank you. So in concrete, the response would be that they need to take all the precaution measures as they do with any other patient and, the, and minimize the amount of staff that would be um, needed within the um, delivery room. The following question says, would it be reasonable to minimize the time spent on the ward by the labor coaches to just uh, the activate phase of labor? In other words, um, make less visits to the, to the pregnant woman. Also, would it be reasonable to have visitations to the ward as to minimize the exposure? We know in many countries we do allow that uh, relative um, could be with the, the woman during delivery, and we do have um, continuous visits um to the to the woman so her question is saying would it be reasonable to minimize the time spent on the ward and the number of visits as well as the um visitation rights to the ward yes of course uh for sure uh the recommendation is uh reduce uh the the number of days that the women and the newborn is at the hospital and also reduce the number of visitors. Uh, that's the recommendation and not uh, just for uh, protect the mother of the newborn, if to protect all the personnel at the health facility and also the visitors because one of the most important sources of infection now are hospitals. So we try to reduce uh, the stay and also the number of visitors. We are in a very complicated moment. Uh, obviously, we try to promote a positive experience of child deliver, uh, but uh, childbirth, sorry, but that is not the ideal moment to. Uh, invite all the family to participate at the delivery and not visit the mother and the baby uh, at the hospital. Over. Thank you. Um, another question is, what is the recommended time frame for the first test of the newborn from a positive mother? In other words, this mother is positive. She just had a delivery. Should we test the baby? And if we should, then when is the best time to do the first test? I think there are two two issues. One is the the, the time, and the second one is with what kind of test. Uh, I don't know about the availability. I mentioned about the immunologic and rapid tests. Uh, 12, because you know, the, the antibodies from the mother can go to the newborn. So it's important that the confirmation of the infection in the newborn come from the PCR and not from the antibodies. So the PCR is the recommended way of testing and confirming the infection in the newborn. And it can be done 
because as it measures the presence of the DNA of the virus, it, uh, when the, the baby is infected, it can be positive. So uh, immediately after birth, two hours, three hours, 12 hours, it's fine. But it's important to implement the measures immediately after the delivery. So this is important. And again, to repeat once a, um, uh, a result is positive or negative, it needs to repeat it, test it in order to confirm that it's negative. So to, uh, to test it separated by 24 hours are required to confirm the infection. There are some cases that have been tested two hours after delivery, and it's, it's fine, but it also depends on the availability of tests and the condition of the mother. Over. Just a quick question. Would this baby considered a, an exposed baby and then would have to follow the quarantine procedures of the 14 days, even if the test is negative? Uh, when you mean the quarantine, uh, because if the baby is negative, but the mother is positive, it's important to maintain the IPC measures in order to avoid the infection from the mother to the newborn. So the, the quarantine time, it's related to the mother and not to the newborn if the newborn has been confirmed as a negative case. If the baby is positive, now he needs to be in quarantine for at least 14 days. Is it clear? Can you answer, please, what test is available in Barbados, if it's a rapid test or PCR, uh, and what is the policy at the national level? Okay, um, we have Dr. Birchwood connected, but just for your reference, the entire ECC is connected to this webinar. So what Barbados is doing might what the other countries are doing. Most are using PCRs, but um, I'm not sure any other country would like to say what tests they are using. I'm looking at the chat to see if anyone is sharing. No country has universal testing. Sorry? I want to ask to the chat, uh, to the all the maybe eight people present here, uh, is there any country that tests uh, universal testing for pregnant women? Uh, is there a policy in place that, or not? Because it is a, a very difficult uh, question related to the testing. Uh, the availability of, of, of the test is, is really crucial in our region. Yeah, there, Dr. Bishwood said that presently they are using PCR in Barbados. And, and uh, Gillian, which is the availability for, for testing? You have the possibility of performing a test. Or which are the requirements to, to test uh, potential cases? And mainly pregnant women and, and women. Over. Good morning. I think it's probably faster for me to answer in this way. We have national criteria in Barbados for testing because we have limited testing um, availability. So at the present time, we do not have universal screening for pregnant women unless they have a history of travel or history of contact with someone who has been positive for COVID-19. Um, and pr at present as well, we have a recommendation that the babies will be tested after they're born if a mother is positive. Thank you. And in that case, what about the newborn? Do, do, do you apply the, do you test newborns 
once the mother has been confirmed as positive? time um, we are working with our infectious disease um, specialist um, who is overseeing the national response and at this point in time because we have very few we have no pregnant mothers who are positive mothers. recommendation that we will test the babies but if we have widespread epidemic proportions at that stage there will no longer be routine testing for babies in Barbados stage of the epidemic. Thank you. Okay, we have another question. 15% of patients are asymptomatic, asymptomatic carriers and transmitters. Then with 1,000 deliveries, 150 would be asymptomatic. What should we do for all patients now? Full PPE versus masks and gloves? We need to manage this population with some uh, care. Uh, obviously, we don't need to use all the arsenal of PPA, but we try to use a surgical mask for the, the women uh, to reduce the transmission. We need to use, uh, the, the team need to use surgical mask also and uh, gloves, obviously, uh, but boots and Googles if are available, but you don't need uh, impermeable uh, cover. Yes. Hey, friends. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but the most important thing here is to reduce uh, the contact uh, and avoid the out and in of the of the room. Once the delivery is finished, to collect all the material to to wash it, and extremely care in uh, the the care of the of the person, the personal care using soap if it's possible change all the, the the clothes and take a shower uh, and reduce the the manipulation of different materials uh, when you finish the the delivery it's a very important issue the problem is that we don't have at this moment all uh, the pp necessary for positive and suspected women so we need to uh, be uh, careful in the use of these uh, PPE materials. In this case, uh, is a very uh, problematic uh, issue because uh, unsuspected women could be uh, uh, positive women and we don't know that so it's important to extremely do effort to avoid transmission Over. so dr de Musio, what i'm understanding is um, your response is that yes we should um use some protection um equipment you're recommending the mask and the googles if it's available if it's available and that the person, the medical staff, should avoid coming in and out the room and should take all the precautions once the delivery is finished to ensure that they are clean and washed off and everything. Um, following up Sorry, on that. Sorry, uh, huh? For instance, in this case, we try to provide to the woman a um, surgical mask, but not an N95 mask. This is a difference, but obviously, if you are in the paradise and you have all the material in this scenario when you don't know uh, the valoration of the women in terms of if she have a test or, or in this case not have a test but can uh, be a, a carrier of the infection we need to do 
uh, a big effort to reduce the transmission. Thank you, Doreen. Uh, please let me give two observations. First, I'm seeing the in the chat they are talking about uh, pregnant women positive for COVID. Please let us know. We're not hearing you, Susan. Sorry, sorry. Uh, we we are. I I saw in the chat that they were talking about the case of pregnant women. Uh, let me reinforce that club is organize a, a database for all those cases. We have a new formal on tip, but also we we are receiving all the data that you have this moment. Uh, the idea is consolidate the, those data for improve our knowledge about all this process. And also, this is a point. So let us know the case, then we can, in another session, I hope you can repeat the session, so, so many questions in another moment, as when you want so you can uh, talk about how to have a good uh, database about this the second point is as you don't have more time maybe it's an important discussion how will be the protection for the health works in the future because now you know that anyone can be a case, a symptomatic case. But in the future, you need to have very clear the level of uh, contagion in the level of the disease in this moment in the country, in this local, for determinate the level of the protection for the health works. What we already know that we need to discuss this in the future. It's a very important discussion. Unfortunately, in many countries, an uh, important part of the death comes from health work. So it's very important. And uh, this is a message for our director, Dr. Carissa Chen, that you need to think about our protection. Of course, CLAP is not it's not her, it's not our specialty, but you can invite someone and discuss this in a second moment, Darlene. I, uh, before you go for finalizing the session, I would like to uh, uh, invite everyone for another section. How many you think this, this is possible? Thank you. Thank you. So, um, colleagues, what um, Dr. Sekuya is saying, that some issues specific to infection control and prevention could be further discussed with a, spe a specialized team that we do have in headquarters that deals specifically to infection control and prevention. Um, Susan, can we take three more questions? Yes, please do that. You have all the time. Go ahead. Okay, what is your opinion about using um, lottery during a C-section? It is reported that the American College of Surgeons are advising to limit the use of cautery in operations. You read, you read the three question on one by one. Remy, you um, can let us know only this. Yeah, I think one by one would be best. Okay, so Remy, go ahead. So 
sorry, but I can't understand the question. Sorry, because my English is not so good. Can you read yeah. the question, Darlene, please? I must confess that this word is also challenging to me. I think it means cauterization, but it's cautery, C-A-U-T-E-R-Y, during surgeries and during the C-sections. Apparently, it's not recommended now. Yes, uh, I, I know. I, I can understand initially. Yes, that's a recommendation made in China and the United States, but uh, we have not clear evidence uh, about that. Uh, the principal recommendation is use uh, hemostasis using stitches point puntos chirurgical uh, points are, are, are not I, I don't know how to say that but stitches stitches, stitches okay and the idea is uh, if it is possible uh, reduce uh, the use of uh, uh, electrical uh, scope and uh, not to use uh, cauterization. That's true. Another question: Is there is no, if there is no mother-to-child transmission, is there a study that would be carried out to monitor the babies of the positive mothers to see any problems in the future? Can you repeat, Darlene? I'm sorry. Yes. If there is no mother-to-child transmission so far, no, no evidence to prove it, um, would you encourage a study that would follow up of the babies of these positive mothers? What, what I mentioned is that there's no evidence of vertical transmission during pregnancy. But once the baby has been delivered, the possibility of transmission uh, is the same as with other persons. So uh, we, we have to be clear on that, on this point. The evidence regarding, uh, or the lack of evidence regarding transmission is through vertical transmission. So we need, as I said, to strengthen the measures for preventing transmission through drops, through uh, flush dots, uh, and through the contact of the mother, hands, surfaces, uh, preparation of milk or extraction of milk is if it's the case. So all the possibilities that can transmit infection from the mother to the newborn need to be addressed and prevented. And as I mentioned, the follow-up need to be provided until the, the confirmation of the negativity in the mother and the newborn. Once the infection is over in the mother, there's no possibility of transmission in that case. But again, the need of strengthening the prevention measures in the household are important because once the mother and the newborn go to their house, they will be in touch with other uh, family members, or other strangers that go to the house or members of the family go out for work. So the, the care need to be provided and the quarantine need to be sustained even when the mother and or the newborn uh, are uh, negative. Is it clear? Yes, thank you. Um, there's someone interested in knowing if, since we have the entire Eastern Caribbean here connected, is there any country that has a case of a positive COVID-19 in a pregnant woman? If so, please respond to me in your chat. I can highlight that uh, even if in the Caribbean uh, there is no uh, now, until now, I want to mention that uh, at least in the in the news, in the press, we don't have the deep, detailed technical information. But, uh, 
there are uh, six uh, deaths of pregnant women, uh, you know, related to the COVID-19. I don't know if we can consider that as a direct or indirect uh, maternal death, but there are, you know, six cases in the Latin American region, two of them in Brazil and four in other countries that uh, at least we know, we are aware that uh, pregnant women who died uh, related to the COVID-19. It is good to have, as a, I, I want to highlight uh, and reinforce Dr. Seruja's message that we, we are, you know, collecting information, data, and SIP, perinatal information system, we have a form for COVID or respiratory infection, acute uh, respiratory infection related to pregnancy in order to, to have that information available. No in China, no in Europe had those data. But if we already have that in lack, uh, we have to be very aware of collecting the right information and collectively respond. As you say that, um, Rodolfo, that's exactly the following question. The person is asking how could they access or use the pregnant woman registry for COVID-19? Would the SIP be the only mechanism or can we send them just a regular form that they would be able to, to fill out? The SIP is not the only mechanism. The facilities, even the country doesn't uh, don't use the SIP, we can use only this form. So let me give the floor to Pablo Obreme or Rodolfo to explain how to use this. And even they don't have any system, they can use this, this the form and send for us in any way so you can collect the data. The idea, and also you can explore this in another moment, is discuss how to use this in the better way. Unfortunately, we know that all the SARS, all the viral conditions and the respiratory syndromes are common in our region. And unfortunately, also with those big surprise. So, we do think that it would be useful for this situation and another situation. I hope no as a pandemic situation, but um, for those situations. Let's give the floor to Bremen, Pablo, Rodolfo, anyone to explain what exactly was the form. And you can send to you the link for you what the best way to implement or to work on with this with all the countries. I know some have SIP, some no. Uh, go ahead, uno de ustedes. Marcelo, Suzanne, if, if you want to explain. So sorry, Pato, I don't, sure. so sorry. Go, go ahead, Pato. Okay, uh, the, the SIP form are in the a special form for mother in the condition of COVID-19. This is coming this week. There has been a consensus on additional maternal data and additional neonatal data. But for all of you that are not using SIP at this moment, I know that many countries are using and then can get the additional data in the SIP plus forms. But for those not using CP yet, there is also the possibility of a C plus Windows based application that you will be able to use and take record of every mother that you want to include with data on perinatal and neonatal and maternal care. And this will be coming out next week. All we can say about this new development that we have been using after a consensus of new variables coming from WHO initiatives, CDC initiatives, and worldwide 
people that are working on networks and having interest in getting more data about this COVID pandemic in the maternal and neonatal area. Over. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pato. Um, so we learned in the chat that there is a case of a pregnant woman positive of COVID-19 in the Caribbean. Um, there is no much data on how it's been managed. I'm assuming this person would be in isolation. And I guess that would respond, would bring up the question that came last week via email about the pregnant women in isolation. If they're in an isolation facility, um, then that person has to be transferred from the isolation facility to the delivery at the hospital or is their experience from countries that have a delivery room set up in the isolation um, facilities? At this point, we have different experiences in different countries. Some countries, the case of the Republic, Dominican Republic, they decide one hospital, uh, one maternity, uh, just to receive all the cases of uh, suspected and COVID positive pregnant women. This is one of the strategies, but not that is not possible in all the countries. Other uh, examples, and probably is the most common example that we have, is at the hospital, uh, uh, the, the managers uh, prepare a uh, restricted area specific for uh, COVID-19 uh, positive pregnant women and in general terms with some possibility of isolation of another areas of the, 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 the same hospital. Even they are trying to or just have a different way for uh, for uh, suspected pregnant women and positive pregnant COVID-19, they go for another uh, way that the other uh, pregnant women. So uh, we have different examples in different countries. Uh, all the all the countries are doing experiences of this issue because as Rodolfo explained at the beginning of this conversation, uh, all people is uh, uh, doing some uh, experiences because nobody has the, 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 the real response of this problem. Thank you so much, Maremen. Um So, I'm not seeing any more questions at this point. Um, if so, then I would, sorry. Go ahead. Um, if so, I would like to just point out some of the main things, the main notes I, um, I would like to highlight to the group. One, um, which I think was the, 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 the beginning of the presentation, there is no additional risk to pregnant women of contracting the COVID-19 as compared to the rest of the population. So being pregnant does not place you with any additional risk, either for you or the child. The suggestion in terms of the antenatal clinic is that we should reduce the number of face-to-face -face antenatal visits and consider substituting this to a sort of telemedicine the doctor would call out to the to the um, pregnant woman to follow up by a phone or or any other electronic um, means in case of the non at risk pregnant women in case of the at risk pregnant women you're also considering you're also suggesting that all the infection control prevention measures should be taken when they're doing their um, their visits vaginal delivery is still the recommendation there's no evidence to suggest that a pregnant, a positive pregnant woman should be delivered by C-section. However, the recommendation is that each country follow their um, 
criteria for a C-section as it is as today. And the recommendation about using the corticoid, um, then again, that there's no evidence of horizontal or vertical transmission, therefore breastfeeding must be maintained. If the mother condition does not allow breastfeeding, we should consider the extraction. So we can also provide the baby with breast milk. And um, a suggestion came up in the chat as well. If we could do the Caribbean registry of positive pregnant women, um, as um, Dr. Seruya mentioned, there is a general registry of all pregnant women. And I guess I would share that form with, with all the countries can able to report on the cases of pregnant women with COVID-19. And um, my last note that I have here is the whole issue of taking care of, of us taking care of ourselves um, in the high percentage of staff getting infected. And with this, we don't want to create more mental stress but rather highlight the fact that we need to protect ourselves. Um, Dr. Seduya, is there anything I missed? No, a perfect resume. Thank you so much, Darlene. The only thing that I want to reinforce that I hope this is the first meeting between us. We are totally available anytime. Do you want to organize a second meeting? And also, we are organized with the people. They send questions for us, and we can, with those questions, uh, be more well prepared. Another point is that I want to highlight is that we do have someone, Thais, that will work with us to organize all the reference, all the all the articles that are published about the the question, the, the issue, pregnancy, um, new words, and COVID. So you have a big database. But for access those data, let us know uh, who is have interest in read some article or receive some information, and it can send for for you. Uh, Darlene, this is a shared point internal, so only you, for example, can assess this, but anyone can ask for us a specific article, a specific reference, so you can send to this. And let us know anything that you want to, to discuss in the next meeting. Thanks so much for this opportunity. And thank you for all your efforts uh, to provide a very good care for all women and new work. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you all for participating. We had a really, really I think we all would agree, a very nice discussion. Um, at some point I saw the participant list was around 92. This is really, really above what we expected. Thanks so much for all the questions. And as we said, this probably did not evacuate all your concerns. Please reach out to me with any other concerns you would like us to address. And as Dr. Seruya said, we can organize a follow up um, to this. Um, I'm hoping I was able to capture most of the questions. And uh, again, on behalf of Dr. Itades, PAHO WHO representative, Dr. Gibre. Um, thanks again for to participating and Pahu is here to support him whatever we could. Please reach out to us and um, keep safe. Thank you, Dr. Durang. Thank you, Dr. Bremen. And thank you, Dr. Gomez. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Welcome. Our team, thank you for you. Also, Dahlene, for organizing all this. Thank you for all. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Stay, stay safe. Stay home. I'm still here, Susan. Oh.